ሰላም ተኻታተልት መደብና ከመይቀንኹም እዚ ቲቪ ሰነድ ኤሌትራስ ተኮልሚ ተኻታተልት መደብና አብ ዘሓለፈ ሰሙን ቀዳማይ ክፋል ናይ ደራሳይ ኮነሬል ጸጎፍ ሳይ አማሓላሊፍና ልኩም ነርና ሕጁን ሰለስተ ተኻታተሊ መደብ ሒዝና ልኩም ቀሪብና ለና ካፕተን ሰለስተ ቀዳማይ ተኽፋል አብ ዘይ ዝስዕብ ሒዝና ልኩም ቀሪብና ለና እዚ ካብ ዋሽንግተን ዲሲ ዝመሓላለፍ ዘሎ ናይ ቲቪ ሰነድ ብጽሞና ከተካታተልና ኻን ዕድም ቲቪ ሰነድ ስቶኮልም ሰላም እንኳን ደሃን መጻሁም ሎሚ መከቢና ጥዑም ማልት ኾይኑ ቀንድ ነገር ናይ ኮሎኔል ጸጉ መጽሐፍ ንመምራቅን ንመፍላጥን ይነይሩ አዞም እድሞትና አብ መንገዲ ያም ዘለው ሕወስና ሆኑ ዳህን ተስፋ ነገር በርክ መጽየ ዝበለስ ብዙህ ነይሩ ግን በዘሎውን ተመስገን ይልና ክንጅምር ንኽይና ንምጸገም ይልና እዚ ቀንድ ነገር ምርዳዳና ስለዚህ part of my speech my presentation is going to be in english and part in tigrinya uh, and some amharic and even arabic with a translation of our professor here professor abde <laughs> if need be huh? so ne um, mejmar تقند علماء كما زبركم ناي كولونيل تشغو مصحف بالانجليزيا تسريحا تقدر تزاجات تقربت نعاني من بلاتيوم زا مصحف زي مجمر تو خلصنا ترغوميا تي قدام اي صحفه ات ووز ان انتجرينيا ووز ريت ان انتجرينيا ووز بابشد انتجرينيا ويتش از ا ستوري اوف هيز اكسبيرينس از ا فايتر in the field and his understanding of what went on and the various struggles both on the personal level because it tells some of his history of his life and why and how he joined the front and uh, and why and how he eventually left the party that he described as a hidden party which is true ab kullu afnay afrika hagarat zewra qasta bizhrit tawdiben zakaida nay tqalstat parstat nirene kom una beritra nahna tom degef tide felatnayo tom tagadel titom taqalas tide felatwo bizhrit anti wishtawit mahaber tamasrita nati guday tekaido nira እቲ አብቲ ማህበረተን ምጣው በናትካ ቮለንተሪዝም ወናትካ ምርጫ ይነበረን እንታ አይዳቱም አባላት ናይታ ፓርቲ ሐጽየው ሐ ሐጽየው ሐ እንብ ማለት ሁን ይለን ታአቱ ማለት አብቲ ማህበር ሶ ዘ ዌይ ዲ ሲክሬት ፓርቲ ኦፍ ዘ ሊደርሺፕ ኢን አሪትሪያ ኢን ፓርቲኩላር ወርክድ ዎዝ ኳይት አ ሚስትሪ ፎር ሚኒ ኦፍ አስ we had no awareness that there was such an organization running the party politically ideologically what have you but the leadership has created a secret party and it was a secret until independence day <laughs> okay in which people were recruited from the movement from the fighters by only not by volunteerism not by choosing or elected one but by being Uh, conscribed or what is the word um, invited to be in the party and the party operated to lead the front and the movement for a long time um, without the knowledge of the people so tonight uh, our major, major discussion 
is to introduce Colonel Chagum, who was, as I said, a fighter, um, very active in the intelligence of the organization, both internally and understanding what is going on and referring to his leadership on Israel. Mm -hmm. And so he wrote a wonderful story, very attractive, uh, very telling in many ways, and I wish all of you in Canada. So my job today is very simple, is to introduce uh, two of our main guests or speakers. The first person doesn't need any introduction. Again, just to say a few things, our main note is going to come from Dr. Barakat Habtasalasi. He was a distinguished professor, retired at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. He, before that, he taught in many other places, including right here in Washington, D.C. at Howard University, where he retired with honors, with a great amount of work. But most significant of his was his role in the liberation struggle. Before that, he was the Attorney General of Ethiopia. He was uh, one of the founding personalities of the African Union. He participated in the first organizational framework of African intellectuals and African leaders in Ghana, 1950. Seven, eight, I think fifty-eight, where he met and worked with all the leaders of independent Africa. Mar Marobo Keita, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, Senghor. Uh, of course, Kwame Nkrumah was the anchor of the meeting, so he <laughs> he was in his own country when meeting him. But also personalities like uh, Franz Fanon, who wrote the book called The Wretched of the Earth, and. Uh, in his book, The Crown of the Pen, uh, Gash Barakat writes that he incidentally beca accidentally became a translator for some of these leaders from the Al uh, Algerian Liberation Front, which included, obviously, Franz Wann. So he's a historic personality just in himself. And I advise anyone who has not read his biography not to simply say, oh, <laughs> which is our, our tradition among Eritreans. <laughs> so the main thing is that this is a historic personality who or even our own people are unwilling to read his historical biography because we're not used to reading. We are Africans. We're mainly storytellers. We tell oral histories about our people, about our history. Again, in writing, we don't have it. So, Colonel Tsagu has done a tremendous gift for us by writing his almost biographical account of what was on the field. And no one knows him better than his uncle, Dr. Barakat Habtislasi. So I'm going to ask him to say a few words about the book and about the person that we are now on. Barakat, I was afraid he might have forgotten Let me uh, read a couple of quotes from one of my favorite uh, colleagues and uh, uh, prominent uh, academic, African academic. Uh, he asked in one of the statements made at the back of this book, how did Isaias outsmart so many of EPLF's comrades to become dictator? And secondly, how could a nation that overcame the Soviet-backed Ethiopian military offensive seem to be so helpless in the face of one man. This is Professor Ntalaja Nzongola from the Congo, who is a colleague of mine at UNC. 
and also from the hard days uh, i was responsible for having him back here in uh, north carolina after he retired from from uh, howard university he read uh, sagu's book uh, and he was impressed by it and he kept wondering because during the struggle uh, when we were teaching at howard university he used to take some of my classes because i used to travel to to uh, new york uh, having the task of representing the EPLF uh, at the United Nations, uh, a work which I described as Mission Impossible. Uh, and Ndalaja uh, Nzangola was a valuable comrade. He was almost like us. He believed in the Eritrean cause. And uh, he used to take my classes while I traveled to New York. Uh, as a result, he became uh, a friend of all Eritreans. He was in Eritrea several times. He loved the Eritrean people and their struggle. And he uh, joins us in our puzzle and uh, wonderment how one man can uh, hold, hold people hostage to his will. It's a question which has bothered many Eritreans and their friends, including many Ethiopians, by the way. How a heroic people who fought for independence could be held hostage, hostage by one man. He's not a god, he's a human being. Uh, and uh, so the point of my uh, citing Professor Zangola's uh, questions is to say that uh, perhaps one way of understanding or answering Zangola's question is uh, to read Sagu's book. Because one key, not the only key, but one key to understanding uh, the predicament Eritrean people are facing uh, in the face of a dictator who has actually betrayed his trust uh, and uh, deliberately at one point, we thought it was just uh, an accident, but it's deliberately impoverishing his own people, behaving like a child who had been promised a wonderful bicycle all his life. And when he was given that bicycle, he rides it a couple of times and then he goes about to destroy it. How can a man who led a people to victory then destroy the outcome of that victory? destroy a nation, because Eritrea is, our, as I've called it in one of my books, a wounded nation, not yet dead, but a wounded nation. And we stand the danger of also losing our sovereignty because things seem to be moving towards uh, Isaiah's handing over Eritrea to the Ethiopian government of um, uh, Abiy uh, Ahmed. This is from his statement. He was seen tapping his uh, chest with gladness, smiling and blowing a kiss to Ethiopian public and saying, I kasernan, al kasernam. A man who had lost hundreds of millions, hundreds of thousands of people, including scores of thousands of comrades in the fight that took 30 years, saying Aikasar Nan, uh, not only a puzzle, actually it's high treason. In my estimation, the whole idea of handing Eritrea on a silver platter like that is high treason. By definition of the criminal law, high treason is when you commit a high crime uh, in betraying your nation. So, the idea of this book, the central theme of this book is the creation of a multi of a second party within the EPLF, uh, about which most of us did not know until uh, 1991. And 
Isaias used the Syndicalist Party to control everything, including the the movement, the EPLF, uh, its uh, principal leaders. He was the engine driving everything. He devised all the policies and the, all the appointments of the key positions were in his hands. Well, you might say, well, isn't that the role of a leader? He has the, the, the power of appointment. Yes, but uh, it, it's all done in, in, in normal situations. It's all done in the open with consultations with colleagues and even the election of some of those colleagues. Uh, this not, did not happen in the case of Eritrea uh, because they had agreed in the, in the secret party to give him power to do anything he wanted. How he was allowed to do this is a mystery. You have to read the book. I cannot uh, really go even begin uh, to explain uh, how it happened. He's my nephew. I'm proud of him. And uh, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that he's a brilliant writer. He's perceptive. He has deep insights into human nature as he describes all the important uh, leaders in the, in the struggle. I think you'll understand Eritrean history more by reading this book and certainly understand why we are where we are right now. So it's for many reasons that I think I am glad that the book was written, but especially because right now, the way we are now confronting this <laughs> tragic pred predicament, it will, uh, it will, it will, it will I think, contribute to an understanding of, of our uh, dilemma, of our problems. Uh, what else can I say? I think uh, uh, the, the book itself uh, is self-explanatory. It was written in Tigrinya. I was amazed at his ability in Tigrinya. He's a, he's a writer in Tigrinya. He writes better Tigrinya than I can, although I'm his elder, his uncle. Uh, and it was translated because many people demanded that it should be, uh, it should reach a wider audience. And I'm glad it was translated. Uh, and uh, I take pride in the fact that I pushed him. He says kindly, he encouraged me, I actually literally pushed him to write this book. So, so some applause please for that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll stop there. Thank <laughs> you.